first things first, fuck your presidential candidates. I don't give a fuck about what he say or she say. Uh, I come from above, I'm all about the love, I'm all about the peace and love. It's about time that you know the truth. I am the one that been warning you. About no doubt, headless back. In fact, they gon' kill me when they hear this track. Your system is found and your plan was whack. And now they're just scared, you can't face the facts. You can't let my people for money, your power, you're nothing but evil. I'm sick of you cowards for what it is worth, man. I hope that you burn, but whatever happens, man, it ain't my concern. Standing up with the standing rock, the sovereign nations unite to block the pipelines from our. Oh, that was fire, bro. I like it. That was Rise by Fabian G. Rios. That was sick, man. You know what I noticed? You know what was like the first thing that I noticed about um about that music video is uh <clears throat> he said he don't care about the presidential candidate. And then he said he don't care what he say he say or she say, which you know he's 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 saying, you know, it could be a woman president. And he equally does not care what a woman president would say as much as he does not care what a man president would say. That is some progressive shit right there. I like it, man. I like it. I, I also I want to say too, like I'm not against the police, you know. Like I I'm very pro police. Actually, like if you if you come around my neighborhood, if you're like in front of my if you're in front of my apartments and you set off in like an M80 or something, you know I'm calling the cops. I w I pay way too much rent for you to be doing that shit around here, but. I will say, when I was living in Hollywood, um, I was living in Hollywood during 2020 and during the George Floyd protests, you know, where all that crazy shit was going on on Hollywood and Vine, I was a block away. I lived on Hollywood, like that was my address, Hollywood Boulevard. And I seen crazy shit, bro, like I've never seen, like I, all I remember is there was this lady, I don't know if she was homeless or not, she was black, I'll tell you that, but four SWAT cops right? They're dressed up in the fucking gear. They're ready to fucking, you know, they look like they should be knocking down the door of like a, a fucking a, a human trafficker or something, right? Uh, but they beat the dog shit out of this poor lady. And I don't mean to laugh, but it was, it was pretty fucking graphic, you know? I'm just a little nervous thinking about it. Um, <clears throat> and then they tased her. Like they tased the dog shit out of her. And then, and then these four SWAT cops, again, LAPD, they're fucking, each one grabs her by one of her limbs, like what, like one dude grabs one arm, one dude grabs the other arm, you know, two guys grab one, uh, each of the legs and they carried her to a cop car and just threw her ass in the back seat. Now I was watching this from my, the rooftop of my apartment, right? But across the street from us, there was another apartment building and it was a, you know, it was a high rise and there was people on the balcony that saw everything that I saw. Right. And so they're all like, yo, what the fuck? And like, everyone's recording, you know, they're talking shit to the police and bro, one of the dudes who was, you know, one of the SWAT guys that tased the shit out of that poor lady fucking pulls out a, a beanbag gun and just points it at them, you know, and everyone just ducks. It was a crazy time, bro. I'll never forget that. It was crazy. There was fucking military on Hollywood, like legit military, which is, you know, the, the government set the military on its citizens. I don't know, you know, but, you know, everyone was telling us to follow the science and fucking, I'm not even going to get into it, bro. I'm just saying the military was out. Uh, oh, another thing I like about that video was the Native American dude at the very end uh, of that clip. <clears throat> bro, he was going dumb. That boy was moving. He was vibrating. You seen that shit, man? Uh, if if I could if I could put my phone on the setting that vibrates like how that guy was vibrating, I don't think I'd ever miss a call. Yeah, no. Uh, overall, good song, great message. Um, strong artist, very strong artist. I liked his his energy, his presence. I thought it was pretty fire. Um, Production level was absolutely beautiful. There's a, no other word to put it. It was very beautiful, very, very well orchestrated. Um, again, his name is Fabian G. Rios. You know, you can catch that video on YouTube. Check him out. He's a good dude. I've had a, I have, I've had a couple conversations with him. Me and him partied in Miami one time. Good ass dude. Uh, yeah, fuck with him. Uh, anyways. This is the Monday to Monday podcast. This is episode two. And if you're here right now, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for subscribing, bro. That just, it means a lot, right? Because I still have, uh, I still have imposter syndrome. I don't feel all the way comfortable being here doing this. Um, but you know what? I, 
I'm facing my fears, bro. You know, I'm going to nut up. You know, I'm going to man up and face my fears. I'm going to put my dick on the table. You know what I'm saying? If you put your dick on the table, things get real weird. Things get real awkward. So I'm going to put my dick on the table and um, I want my fears to feel awkward. I want them to be like, you know, like what the, like this guy just put his dick on the table. He's a little too unpredictable, right? And then they bounce. And then what are you left with? No fear. So that's the plan. Um, <clears throat> but talking about manning up, man, it's, it's I, I find a funny little trend going on online. It's been going on all year where everyone's acting like Andrew Tate. Like everyone all of a sudden is, you know, fucking doing push-ups and smoking fake Cohibas and shit. Like, and don't get me wrong, I like Andrew Tate. I think his presence on the world was very much needed on the world stage because there's too much weird pussy shit going on. Like men are super feminine and women are super masculine. It's really fucking weird. Like if you really think about it, it's weird. Like women are like, oh, we want equal rights. And to them, equal rights means like, I want to be a man. I want to, I want to have the, have the attitude and the attributes of a man. That's like, I don't understand how that makes sense. You know, like uh, you could be a strong mother, like you could be a strong woman and be soft and feminine and gentle and beautiful and have a pretty laugh and smell good and do all those beautiful feminine things and you're still valuable. Like who told you that's not valuable? That's crazy. That's that's low key retarded, you know. And I don't mean to use the R word because I don't have anything against the the mentally challenged community. Um, I actually love mentally challenged people because I'm probably one of them, to be honest. But um, yeah, it's just weird. But but now with like, the, you know, this is weird shift because it's like everyone wants to be this tough guy. And it's like, bro, you were probably raised in the fucking suburbs. Like chill, bro. You know, you, you need to have a little bit of self-awareness. Not everyone's a fucking alpha, alpha male. Everyone wants to be an alpha male. And that's okay, bro. You know, I don't think I'm an alpha male. I think I have alpha male traits and I think that it, it's a spectrum. You feel me? Like it's a spectrum like anything, right? And if there's someone that's on the on like on the far side of the spectrum where they're like I'm a f alpha male all the time 24/7 even when I'm asleep, even in my dreams I'm an alpha male. And I think it that person's insufferable. Like even that person wants to get away from himself. You know, he's like, bro, this guy is annoying. This guy's fucking annoying. And he's like pointing at the mirror because like, who the fuck wants to deal with that guy? You know? So there are like, I've met um, my father, right? One of the people that I look up to, he's, he is definitely an alpha male fucking type of person, you know? But I've noticed that when he would try to enforce that shit on everybody, it's, he gets nowhere. But once he learned to soften up, right? Alpha male. And every now and then you throw in a couple of beta qualities he leveled up in life quick. Like I seen it in, in all his relationships, in all his, um, you know, business dealings, you know, he doesn't do business, but at work, like I've seen him at work and like everyone fucks with him. And I've seen him there. Cause I, me and him work together for a little bit. Like it's kind of crazy where it's like, you don't, if, if you're the top dog 24 seven in every situation, you are never going to make it. You are, you're fucking annoying. And then not only that, but it's the internet. Everyone's pretending, right? Everyone's pretending, oh, bro, I fucking, I fucking woke up and I did a hundred pushups, you know, before I even opened my eyes. I jumped out of the bed with my eyes closed and I hit a hundred pushups and then I opened my eyes. That's how tough I am, you know? And then they, then they say they, they went for a 20 mile run and then ate a fucking, you know, they ate raw meat. You know, or they ate it. They took a bite out of a live cow. Like, yeah, I don't. You know, I don't even eat raw meat. I I eat, I eat the fucking cow because I'm such a fucking tough guy. You know, and that's how people portray themselves on the internet these days. And I think it's really weird. Um, you, you just be you, bro. You know, like just be you. Like if everyone was a fucking tough military guy, you wouldn't have any art or any music. No good music, at least. You know, you wouldn't have beautiful architecture. You know what I'm saying? Um, there'd be a lot missing from the world. So you just got to, bro, you just got to figure out who you are. 
You figure out who you are. And again, that's like a trial and error process. I'm not going to lie to you. You're going to have to push your limits. But that's how you find out who you are and where you lie within that spectrum. You know, and if you're not like, you know, Mr. Alpha guy, that's fine, bro. Listen, I'm not an alpha male and I got plenty of bitches. All right. I got plenty of bitches, you know what I'm saying? I got fucking, bro, I, everywhere I travel to, if I went somewhere on vacation, I got a little bit of pussy, you feel me? If I was single, obviously, like, I, I'm not a, Hispanic men don't cheat, Latinos don't cheat, just, in, you know, for the ladies, just so you know, Latinos don't cheat, um, but I'm saying, bro, like, you just gotta be yourself, you know what I'm saying, and and by being yourself, and this is the crazy part, man. Like, cause all my like usually in my friend groups, or or like if I have like a best friend or whatever, and I noticed this throughout my life, right? Whether I was in my teens, twenties, uh, in my when I was a kid, even like I was always the like the chill friend. Like I was the friend that was cool, and I was always like super tight with the person that everyone was annoyed by, like the super alpha male aggressive guy. That was always that was always my partner in whatever I was doing. And I was always like the chill guy that everyone like liked talking to, you know, and that was just my role. And luckily for me, I was able to fucking just roll with it, like, because I found it was easier to be that than try to be something else that I wasn't, you know. And uh, even in my job now, bro, I, got, I work in corporate right now and I survived layoffs. You know how I survived layoffs? I mean, they tell me that it's because they, you know, they like the work that I do and uh, because, you know, every, they, they, you know, because of the effort that I put in on a business level. And I think it's true, right? I, I work, but I think a big part of it has to do with, with the fact that I get along with everyone. Like I crack jokes. I, I create like a little personal bond between me and whoever is in front of me, right? I don't care if it's the, if it's the chief marketing officer uh, which actually she's one of my homies like she like I'm so cool with her um, I don't care if it's my mentor I don't care if it's a, a vice president of XYZ or or you know I don't care who it is bro I'm gonna if I'm gonna fuck with you I'm gonna fuck with you and that's just kind of how I roll man and, and 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 it's worked for me like it it you know and I'm not, and I'm not saying I'm here to be friends with everybody because a man who's friends with everybody is an enemy to himself right you got to have the things that you're you're about like for me, I'm about my personal growth. I know what I want. I know what I want. And if what I want and what you want me to be don't align, right? Then I'm, you know, I'm just going to fucking just fade away. Like I'm not I'm not going to make a big stink about it. I'm not going to be like, "Hey, fuck you." I'm not going to do that cuz it's just pointless. But if if what I'm if what I'm going for, if, if the life that I want and, and the person that is around me, if anybody around me does not align with the life that I want or the things that I want to achieve, I just fade away from them, bro. Like, and I don't care who it is either. You know, it's sometimes it's friends. Sometimes it's family. Sometimes it's, you know, and what's crazy is sometimes you'll meet people and instantly you align because y'all are on the same mission. You're in the same path. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, yeah, bro. Just just be who you are, man. And like, and, uh, but also I want to say it's important. Like a lot of the shit that and the Andrew Tate guy says, super important, bro. You bet you, you should be working out. You should be doing hard things, trying to work hard, be honorable, you know, learn how to fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm a lover. I'm not a fighter. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lover, but I know how to fight, you know? And even when I was younger, bro, like I was always getting into bar fights and I would, I would, I mean, I I have moments where I'm getting my ass whipped, but I never lost a fight because I was because I'm mean. Like I'm a nice guy, but if I'm mean, I'm fucking mean, bro. And uh, and so now, like me being, you know, as I got older, I realized, you know what? Like I should actually train to do this, not because I want to hurt people, because I haven't gotten into a fight in like I don't know, like five years, probably more. Not because I want to hurt people, but because. Um, it's, it's a good skill to have, you know, when I used to fight, when I was younger and I used to fight, it was never like to defend myself, you know, um, actually I was always like poor at doing that. I was poor at defending myself, but I was always defending other people. Like every fight I got into, there was a year, I think it was 2017 that I got into like maybe three bar fights that day or that year. And every time I got into a fight, it was to defend somebody else, defend one of my friends or defend somebody, 
you know, and, um, and yeah, and, you know, this past year I've been, I've been learning how to box all year. Shout out to my coach, Clint, shout out my, shout out to my, uh, um, the people that put me on, shout out to everybody I've been training with, um, you know, and it, and it's cool and it's a nice feeling and it feels good and it actually makes you smarter. It's very strategic. It's not a brute thing, you know, so yeah, you should definitely be working out, definitely learn how to fight, definitely work hard, but if you're into Pokemon and, and uh, or Fortnite, or if you're fucking, I don't know, like, yeah, whatever you're into, bro, like, just that's fine. Be into it. Go all in. Be confident about it. You know what I mean? But um, just don't be don't be a fucking wimpy little bitch. You know. And and I think that message is important. Like, no, like me as a friend, I'll be anybody's friend. But if you're like a wimpy little bitch, I will be less inclined to like want to make a connection with you. You get what I'm saying? Like if you're, if you're artsy or, or you're into Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh or something, but you're like, you know, like you look like you can throw a punch or, or like you can say like, you can crack like an offensive joke and not be, you know, a dickhead about it, but it's literally just your humor then I'll definitely want to be friends with you. You know what I mean? But if you're like, you know, if you're like into crypto and then you're super like fucking wimpy and, you know, you're not into, you're not into anything that resembles manliness, then I can't fuck with you, dog. I can't fuck with that weak shit. Um, anyways, we're going to go into a segment. We're going to go into a segment that I like to call This Week on X. And what it is is I go over all the crazy shit I see on X, uh, formerly known as, as Twitter. Um, so let's see what we got here. <clears throat> all right, so Israel versus Palestine, obviously, right? Like who hasn't heard of that? Um, this is a weird one because I don't really want to talk about it, um, but you kind of have to have a stance, right? Like you can't not talk about it. It's like it's like if you're if if you're at a party. Right. Or like, no, let's say you're in a hotel room and there's like five people there. And one of the people decides to just like go to the corner of the room and just lay a fucking loud shit. You know, like he just, you know, pops a squat and just starts fucking shitting. And he's loud about it, like grunting as he does it. Um, It's hard to ignore. You know, like you can, you can't really like just look at each other and pretend and talk louder and and like, it's hard to ignore. And that's kind of what Israel, uh, the Israel Palestine thing is. It's like, it's hard to ignore. It's like, fuck dude, it's in your face. Like, bro, I was on LinkedIn the other day and people are posting about it. It's like, what the hell? It's everywhere. Um, But again, my take on it is that um, that's, that's like a family issue. That's like a family thing. It's a family issue, right? So it's like uh, if you were invited to a cookout, right? Let's say you have black friends, okay? And, and, and somebody, one of your black friends invites you to a cookout. And then you're there, you're at the cookout, you know, you're drinking some, some soda, you know, whatever flavor it might be. And uh, you're eating whatever meat might be on the grill. And uh, you're having a good time, right? And then two brothers start arguing you know and the argument gets louder and louder and they start pushing each other and then they start throwing blows right they start fighting would you get in the middle of that no i don't would you have an opinion on it on who's right and who's wrong no why 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 you want to know why you wouldn't because that's between family that's like family shit bro and like you're not part of that family so like best to stay out of it you get what i'm saying and that's kind of how i look at it like to me it's like yo y'all too our family. I don't know how related you are. I don't really know like the full deep history. Um, but you guys are for sure somehow related, right? You guys are, you know, you're ended up in the same country together somehow. And, uh, now you guys are fighting. So like, that's like a family ordeal. Like I can't even get in between it. I can't, I can't even, I can't even necessarily have a fucking opinion on it. You know what I'm saying? Um, Oh, uh, what else? Uh, oh, crypto is up again. So those of you who, you know, bet it on Solana, which is kind of crazy because I used to hate Solana and because I made all my money on Ethereum last bull run. But uh, yeah, everyone on Solana is up right now. Like if you if you put money into Solana a month ago, you doubled your money, right? 
Like if you put a dollar and 18 cents in Solana 30 days ago, you now have $2 and 36 cents. All right, that's big money right there. But who is the real winner? Who's the real winner of this upcoming crypto bull market? It's not the it's not the fucking, you know, little weird dorky nerds that are going to get all this money. It's they're not the winners. They're not the winners. They're still going to be the same weird dorky nerds, right? The real winners are the Eastern European and Latina women who these fucking guys are going to spend that money on. Congratulations, ladies. And for the record, uh, Eastern European women are basically winter Latinas, right? I, I, I probably heard that somewhere. I probably heard that. I probably stole that thought from somebody. But they're, dev they're basically winter Latinas. They're like the same thing, but in the snow. You get what I'm saying? Um, they're mamacitas de la nieve. And that's Spanish for snow moms. Um, Candace Owens, she was, she was trending on, on X. Uh, I like her, man. She's pretty fucking hot. You know? Like, she's, she's a cutie. Um, not as a pregnant woman, because I'm not into that. Like, you know, as a pregnant woman, she's just like a pregnant lady. But, like, before she was pregnant, I was like, every time she was on the TV, I'd turn that bitch up. What does this pretty lady got to say? And then she'd say some shit, and I'd be like, damn, she's fucking funny. Like, she's she's funny. Because uh, she'd be, you know, again, the universities are filled with these kids with crazy ideas, man. And, again, I am so, I believe that everyone should believe in whatever they're into, right? Like, if you're into fucking, uh, if you're a dude and you want to put on makeup and wear heels, cool. Like, that's fine. Like, do it. Whatever. I don't care. Um, but have some sense, right? Like, first off, don't make me have to do that. Or, like, don't, like, I don't want to go to a bar where that's happening. Like, if I go to a bar, I want there to be heterosexual women there. Because that's who I'm trying to talk to. I'm not trying to talk to a guy LARPing as a chick. That's, why would I want to do that? That doesn't even make sense. And then also... Go to a place where they fucking celebrate that, right? Go to Portland, go to Seattle, go to New York City, go to San Francisco. Um, don't go to Houston. Don't go to fucking Birmingham, Alabama, you know? Like, why would you do that? Oh, we're unsafe. Bro, go, move. Go somewhere where you can do that. There's a lot of places you can go, bro. Anyways, yeah, these universities, I saw a video where, like, she's at a university talking, and there's just, you know, all these fucking blue-haired weirdos get standing up and complaining of, oh, oh my God, we're, you know, the suicide rates are so high, you know, oh my God, because of people like you, and she's just clowning on them, because she's like, no, it's not, bitch, what are you fucking talking about, like, the suicide rates are high amongst people who go and cut their dicks off, because they're realize that you know maybe something happened to them as a child and it fucked them up psychologically and instead of getting actual psychological help from a doctor they got prescribed you know hormone drugs and they got told hey have this life-changing surgery bro and they chop their dick off and then you know maybe a couple months or a couple years later then they're sad because then they're like what the fuck did i do it is a pretty sad it's a sad situation you know, and she's like, I'm not the one that told them to ch chop their dick off. You did. You people did. And it's funny because it's like, holy shit, that's true. That is true. You know, and it's, again, I'm not a Republican or a wild conservative or anything. I, I don't I don't give a fuck. You know, I, I always say I'm not even smart enough to even have an opinion on all that shit. Um, so genuinely, I don't give a fuck. But, uh, you know, one thing that I've always noticed is that a lot of people, because a lot of people who come out of universities have the same ideology, which to me, I find suspicious, right? Um, if everyone agrees with you, I find that a little suspicious. I've always been the kind of person, like if everyone's going left, then I'm, I'm going to hang back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang back and see how it goes for you guys. If it works out, I'll join you. If not, you know, I'm going to go the other way. That's, as, that's how I've always been. Um, but you know, a lot of people that graduate from these universities, they don't find it kind of, they don't find that weird. 
And it's funny because whenever I do meet someone who has these like radical, you know, leftist views, they're all one coming out of universities and two, uh, they all kind of look down on you for not having an education. Because if you're like questioning it, they always cite a source of like, well, this person graduated from this place and that's why I trust them. And they're a graduate as well. So they're basically telling you that because you don't have an education, your, your opinion's dumb. You don't know. And it's like, bitch, I have eyes. I have eyes. I have ears. I have instinct. I have intuition. I, 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 I'm just paying attention to what's going on around me. You don't need a fucking education for that. You know, dude, it's so fucking crazy. I, so this past summer, I worked at a wine bar right, to pay off my student loans, and I worked with this girl, she was actually kind of hot, bro, it, it's crazy, except for the armpit hair, but she was like a full-on, like, full-on, like, lefty, liber, liber, liberal, right, like, she was a communist, like, she said that, she's like, she said she was a big fan of Fidel Castro, which to me is like, what, like, bro, I'm, my parents came here from Nicaragua, okay, that's a socialist, damn near communist country, and here's this white woman with an iPhone saying like, oh, I'm a communist. I, I you know, I love Fidel Castro. And I'm like, Bro, that's crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, and again, like I don't make a big stink about this kind of shit, right? So it's like, whatever, I'm just not going to bring up any sensitive topics. But uh, me and another coworker of mine who was Colombian, right? We're teaching her Spanish, right? That was how we got through the day. We would be teaching her Spanish, the good shit, the bad shit, you know, just teaching her the language. And uh one day she goes, why, you know, why does certain words, why do certain words change, right? Because in Spanish, words have either a feminine or a masculine connotation. That's just the way the language is. The, the language is like that. And, uh, you know, we're, we're telling her like, that's just, I mean, that's just how it is. Like everything has like a feminine or a masculine connotation. That's just what it is. It's a binary language. And she's like, well, that's fucking dumb. And she like, oh, no, she said, that's ridiculous. And I'm like, bro, this is crazy. Like, you're supposed to come from the camp that's accepting of everybody and loving of everything. And everyone gets along in this world that she believes in. But she doesn't accept this because it goes against the, you know, the commandments of her ideology. And she was actually interesting. Like she was a very interesting person to like work with because there was a lot of moments like that where I'm like, this is very contradictory, but she was so ingrained in her thoughts and her ideas that, there, you know, like she would fucking fight you over it. Like she would get angry, bro. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to air out her business, but there were, there, there were some moments that it's just like, it got, it got crazy, you know? Um, yeah, so that's that's it for today's episode. Uh, feel free feel free to drop a comment. Uh, let me let me know what you think about today's episode. What should I do different? Again, this is episode two. This is I'm I'm still figuring this shit out. Um, what would you like to see? Uh, if you're a musical artist, send me your shit, bro. Send me your shit, and if it's good, you know I'll put it up. We'll talk about it, and if it's bad, then um, we'll make fun of you a little bit. You know, not a problem, not a big deal. All right, peace.